Hello, uh, good morning uh, to uh, the President SLMA and the uh, chairpersons. Uh, today, we thought of uh, talking about mass casualty management, whether we are ready to face it. Uh, why we uh, selected this topic is in uh, our province itself, we face mass casualty events at least once a year. So when you take uh, the last two years, there are a few incidents. I'll just go through quickly to uh, show you what are the incidents. And the one is uh, there was a Sri Lanka transport bus veered off from the road and plunged down the precipice in 2020, January uh, in Pasara. And there were about 41 casualties who were sent through district hospital Pasara to provincial General Hospital Badulla, and there were eight fatalities. And I hope all of you can uh, remember these are terrible accidents with uh, significant damages. And the most recent one was uh, the private bus, which we had off from the road down again a precipice in the Pasar region. That has happened in 2020 March. I hope you all can remember, which was a uh, news in the media at that time. There were about 46 casualties altogether and 33 were transferred to Badulla and uh, there were 14 fatalities. Actually, there were 13 dead on site and one patient died on admission to PGH Badulla. So uh, I thought it's a, a topic we had to discuss, uh, especially in the people who are in the Uber province to be aware of the management in case of a mass casualty event. So these are the pictures of the last Passer event. There are telltale signs of the story behind. The road is, was obstructed by a heavy uh, uh, stone and there was undisciplined road manners, which has led to a terrible accident with uh, a bus ended up on a ramp of pile. And we can see the pictures there, how difficult it was to recover the patients from the injury site to the casualty recovery collection point. Okay. When you talk about concept of mass casualty, it differs from what we do day to day in our health institute. So day to day, we see multiple casualties coming into the hospital premises, but most of the time, they are not exceeding the capacity of the hospital resources and the human factor. So in that instance, we do greatest good for the individual. We try to do the greatest good. But when there's a mass casualty event occurs, which the number of casualty exceeds the capacity of the hospital, capacity of the resources and the human resources available, then we have to change the concept of management to do the greatest good for greatest number of casualties. So try to save as much as possible within the limited resources. So the priorities may be determined by the casualty characteristics, the complexity of injuries, the available resources and equipment and the situation, the event progression. So especially if there's any landslides, the things can progress. And even if there were terrorist attacks, things can happen as secondary events. So we have to be prepared. So disaster management, we divided into phases for the easiness of management and uh, prediction. Starts with the mitigation or the hazard vulnerability preparedness, the planning and training, the response in the emergency phase and the recovery and restoration back of the healthcare institute to the normal previous situation. So mitigations or the hazard vulnerability, it will be differ from region to region. It will be specific to geographical areas in our Uber province, we are more prone to have landslides and the stones are rolling into the roads. There will be bendy roads with 
uh, acute precipice and there's increased risk of accidents there will be extreme weather conditions these are some photos which will depict what are the disasters which can happen in our region so preparedness is a must uh, as a healthcare institute all has healthcare institute in the region to face these situations so there will be a part done by the community the community preparedness done by the first responders the civil society and the government institutes and police military fire and rescue and ambulances and specifically there is a uh, special army camp situated mainly for disaster management in uh, badulla district there is a army camp they are always prepared for emergency situations in this region then the hospital preparedness mainly we should know what is our surge capacity or surge cap capabilities that means how many beds we can occupy in case of emergency and uh, not only beds how many uh, healthcare staffs can be brought in case of emergency within a short notice and there is a hospital disaster plan i hope every hospital will have and badul itself also have a uh, disaster plan prepared for this these uh, emergencies and we there are will be a hospital incident command center to control all the activities during an uh, emergency situation and we have to train our staff and do exercises either table top discussions or disaster drills to make sure we will do the best in case of the real situation so this is just a picture of the disaster management plan we have uh formulated by the disaster management team of the badulla involving the clinician and all the staff and uh, to make sure it happens uh, properly we may have to do disaster drills we have done once in badulla uh, and with the help of the stakeholders of the community responders and the hospital staff and we were able to find out few flaws in the system and we Uh, discussed them and try to uh, uh, do alterations in our practice and uh, do the necessary things to make sure every time it happens in a proper scientific manner so it's important to do these drills to identify the flaws because if you face a real situation you might uh, uh, risk the patients who are coming to hospital if you don't follow the system so we were able to analyze with the talking with the stakeholders and we uh, identified some flaws and we were able to educate the first responders about the first aid matters and the safe patient transport which have noted during the disaster drills so that they will be able to do a uh, standard care in case of an emergency so the response when the acute event happens what will happen start with search and rescue by the first responders and triage what is that is one of the important concept in mass casualty management evacuation of the patient and the definitive care at a healthcare institute so there will be a incident command center in the community wise and in the hospital itself to manage the operations planning logistics and finances and administration related so we might need outside assistance especially when we are talking about the ambulances local regional and national and the disaster medical response from the hospital itself consists of the triage emergency surgery care of the critical illness and rapid decision making especially when transferring to other hospitals so what happened in a disaster situation so the pre hospital events are also very important because as medical officers uh, we may have to go as a support team and in badulla itself we have a plan to send one or two ambulances equipped with medical officers nurses and other staff with all the emergency equipment to incidents because in our 
area, the access is not very easy. So uh, in, especially in the out of working hours, uh, it will be help to give the care at the site. So the first responders who go there, the, either military or the community, they identify the alive and they try to move them to safe area. So this is one important thing, especially if you are a medical person who involved in going as a first responder, main thing is you have to take care of yourself. Safety is paramount important, especially in disaster situation. As I said, there can be secondary disasters happening and same time there will be risks when approaching the site. I, I, can, I can remember some of the medical officers who volunteered to go there and they faced with some unexpected life-threatening events by, by rolling of stones while they are uh, trying to approach the site. So as uh, first responders, it's your first priority to make sure that you are safe in approaching these patients. Okay, so there will be a casualty collection point where you sort the patient and assess according to the ATLS manuals if possible. And we may have to give life saving interventions and arrange treatment and transport. So field triage is very, very important thing because when there's a number of casualties exceeded our capacity, we may have one or two ambulances arrive in the scene. We may have to sort out the patient who really need to go to hospital in the first or the second ambulance. So there will be people who are shouting and uh, demanding care, but as a professional, you should be able to identify the people who are medically compromised. So that's why field triage is important uh, in a disaster situation where you have to use the available human resources and equipment to save many people, not to do everything for every patient. So we categorize them for immediate, the red category, people who have immediate life-threatening injuries and delayed for injuries requiring at least maybe they can, they will be surviving at least for six hours without any acute treatment and the minimal injured who are walking wounded people. And there's another category, which is called the expectant, especially comes in the disaster management situation when there's a lack of facilities to transport. These categories has to be uh, decided uh, by the relevant person who they are doing the triage and the deep people who are at the site. Okay, so safe patient, transfer should be arranged as, as much as possible with the spinal board, cervical collar and head blocks. But in the real situation with the panicking of the public, this doesn't happen always, but we'll try to educate the first responders to do the best with at least with some uh, compromised uh, situations. So ideally the receiving end should be decided where to send the patient and informed if possible. So how do you do the triage? So it's something uh, which has to be done quickly and precisely to identify the patient. If there's about more 20 or 30 patients lying down, if you are the only medical person there, you should be able to identify who are going to the red category, who are going to the yellow category and who are going to the green category to decide which patient goes first in the first coming available transportation facility. So if you have the facilities, you can do the resuscitation all and same time decide which patient goes first. So there are a lot of standard practices done all over the world. And I will describe one of the things which can do within few minutes by a, as a first responder to identify and categorize them into these categories, the immediate, delayed, minimum, or death. And uh, in military setup, we use the other words like P1, P2, P3 for the same categories. But in civil setup, we use this red, the yellow, and green colors, traffic light colors. So what you can do is you can ask if you go to the scene and once you're safe, you can ask the people who can walk out of the scene by their own to come towards a certain point and people who can walk and come toward the collection point, that means they are not having any significant 
uh, life threatening injuries at the moment so they are they can walk on their own and they must be cardiovascular wise stable at the moment so you can keep them uh, till late till you sort out the urgent patients so then you find the people who are lying down around who can't move you go to them and you can first thing is you can check the breathing uh, as you know in each and every uh, resuscitation we check for breathing and uh, if there's no response what we can do is we can do at least two attempts of opening airways and if there's no response we have to categorize them as disease and move into the next person which doesn't happen in the hospital setup because we have the facilities we might resuscitate the patient till we get some uh, signs of life but here when you have a lot of patients you should if you are the only one or two medical persons around you should be able to identify the people who can be saved uh, maximum number of patient to be saved so here we may have to compromise our approach and go and try to identify people who can be saved so we'll be uh, categorize the mass dead and go to the another paper another person and if the breathing rate is more than 30 we have to categorize them and immediately there is something happening there or even if it's less than 10 there's a uh, there's a risk so we categorize them as red and we try to send them uh, as soon as possible while stabilizing and if it's less than 30 you can't just categorize them as delayed there may be other areas of compromise you will go to the next check the capillary frame time which can be done quickly if more than two seconds that means there's problem with the circulation it's compromised you categorize red and if it's normal or less than two seconds we go to the next step of checking the conscious level you can ask them to follow a simple command ask to excuse your hand or anything if they can't that means their cerebral perfusion is reduced GCS is low, uh, so then again you should categorize them as red to send them early as possible. Okay, so I'll not be talking about the resuscitation, which you have to do uh, depending on the equipments and facilities available. But in a disaster situation, when there are more than 20, 30 patients lying around, you might not be able to resuscitate each and every patient. So that is the difference in mass casualty management okay so the hospital phase starts simultaneously usually we get a message from some of the sources like police or we get a message for the telephone exchange and we usually with the involvement of the director who is the uh, president or the person who's in the incident command center he has to confirm the message and activate the disaster management plan okay so usually if there are more than 20 patients casualties are coming uh, at once we will activate the disaster management plan and it differ with each different hospital uh, due, depending on their surge capacity and capabilities so we will activate the disaster management plan in the hospital uh, we will be all the involved doctors and other staff to be notified and the receiving area will be prepared because there should be a one-way traffic uh, towards the uh, admission receiving area. And there will be a triage area manned by the senior most consultant available at the surgeon or the orthopedic surgeon available and or maybe a senior most medical officer in the emergency treatment unit. And the specific areas which are already designed will be cleared to accommodate the patients who are coming and a special area for the disease patient. And the theaters and ward setup will be altered. The routine theaters will be, uh, list will be uh, stopped and they will be prepared for any emergency surgery. And ward will be cleared to accommodate the incoming patients. And there will be separate areas for families and the people who are volunteers who are coming and a media center to control the traffic inflow during this event. So this is a plan for our hospital. There will be different plans for different hospitals. These, there are designated people 
for each and every area and they are displayed properly and they are informed and they should know they should know where they should go when there's a trauma call or an emergency mass casualty declaration so they will find where they should belong and that will avoid the confusion which happened during a disaster the people are uh, flocking together without knowing what to do but we have if you have a plan where you should go and uh, any designated position and a designated uh, number of people then we will have equal number of patients for each and every place otherwise everybody will flock at the entrance and uh, the proper triage and the flow of patient will be disrupted so uh, it's always better to have a pre-planned uh, uh, flow what to do okay so then there will be a trolley area where the ambulances bring and they will be transferred to trolleys and a triage area which is manned by uh, the senior most consultant uh, surgeon available at the time or a senior house office available and we will be re-triaging re the patient who are coming to the hospital uh, especially sometimes there may not be triage at the site so we have to again go with the red yellow green categorization uh, by uh, looking into the vital signs to prevent any over or under triage which i come back to you later so to prevent any uh, to make sure that only the necessary patients are categorized into red uh, to go, who go into the emergency treatment unit so the emergency treatment unit it's dedicated for red patient who needs uh, emergency treatment and there will be a yellow area and a green area for the walking wounded and a specific area for the dead people and as we all know each and every hospital and ward have the disaster cupboard and there will be documentation process with the admission of the disaster patients because we don't have time to go through their names and everything they will be tagged with number as they come with a number and they were dedicated they have a dedicated file with all the investigation forms and all the uh, documents which are needed and will be categorized with a number and a tag of the color red yellow and green okay so once you admitted the patient again when you are talking about for the academic purposes and for transferring in between pay hospital we may use other complex triage categories using trauma scores like revised trauma score or uh, to recategorize the patient once uh, we need to identify who needs further treatment or to send it to other hospitals for ICU care. So once the acute phase is over, starts the recovery. So the action of this uh, mass casualty incident will be terminated when the casualty flow is over and uh, when there's a possibility of a secondary incident is excluded with available evidence that there's not, not going to be any further incidents and when the hospital in a position to carry out its routine work once the mass casualty action is terminated then it has to revert back the hospital premises will be thoroughly cleaned routine disaster stocks of medical and surgical supply will be brought back to the previous levels the inventories will be checked and hospital will switch back to its routine mode of operations which it was doing before the disaster and again once a disaster happened we will go for a post disaster management analysis to see with the full team discussion we check about our performance achievements problems they should be discussed every time we will improve we will some, find some uh, faults will improve every time so always it, each and every disaster it's always better to do this discussion and improve any uh, thing in the disaster prepared plan and at least to plan an exercise to make sure every people who are stakeholders and all other staff uh, are aware of this kind of situation because staff changes consultant changes so each and every uh, time there will be some confusion so always better to have a uh, exercises to make sure what will happen in case of a real emergency 
So what is expected outcome in a disaster management? What are you going to achieve as a healthcare institute? So what we have to do is to reduce the critical mortality rate. That is what we are expected in a managing this mass casualty event. So that is the uh, critical mortality rate is the percentage of critically injured survivors who are coming to hospital who will subsequently die. So that means as a hospital, we should be able to save most of the patient who are critically ill who are coming after the incidents. A mass casualty incidents okay what are the challenges which will we faced and which all of you may face in case of emergency uh, the mass casualty incidents communication is one of the main uh, challenge we'll face so till sometimes the mass casualty casualty flow ended we are not sure how many patients are coming there are a lot of messages controversy messages coming so there should be a proper channel of communication with the authorities to make sure how many people are coming to get ready to treat them. So there will be a lot of miscommunications and panic between the staff and all. So the communication has to be always through proper accepted channels. And something is special in this situation this year, the epidemic situation. The what, how we manage them earlier we might not be able to freely manage during this COVID situation. All of us may have to suspect each and everyone should be a COVID suspect. So we have to use the precautions and it will make the mass casualty management very difficult in this current era. So recovery and transportation, the, especially in this area, we have a very difficult areas to access. As I showed you in the Basra bus accident, it was about many feet down the, from the road and the casualties were brought by just using bed sheets and with compromised uh, methods uh, to the casualty collection point. And the transportation is also difficult uh, because the one way access, the ambulances has to go and bring them and go back uh to the several times Th those are the practical portions because some areas they don't have multiple accesses there will be only one way access not like in the uh, suburbs or the in colombo where there can be multiple road accesses and the problem with the triage the over triage is you are categorizing most of them uh, uh without any scientific evidence to red category and you will flush of, uh, full make the ETU full and you won't be able to treat it, uh, the most important patients. So over triage makes that problem and under triage is if you don't identify the people who are in dire need of an emergency treatment, they might uh, suffer from uh, morbidity and mortality if you don't do uh, the proper triage. So triage is one th important thing uh, to make sure we, we will be able to manage each category properly and the crowd control so when there's a message of a mass casualty there will be flock people are flocking together to the hospital the volunteers and uh, relatives so it is always obstructing the patient flow in this situation so they are, should be always prepared to manage the crowd in this situation so what are the take-home messages first thing is the mass casualty can happen anywhere, anytime of the day, even a weekend, midnight. So you have to be prepared and practiced. So then you will be able to do the most good for most of the people and save their life. The other most important thing is uh, prevention it is always better. When I go back to the passenger bus accident, we discussed this with our consultant JMO also with the, he who he has done post-mortem in all the 14 fatal cases dead people and out of these 14 only one patient died after admission to hospital all other 13 were died at the scene and by going through the post-mortem all the injuries were not compatible with the life so that means 
even we had the state of art hospital in the top of the mountain which the bus failed we won't be able to uh, save those people so always even we were able to save most of the people uh, one uh, the, out of the 33 who came to the hospital only one died who died at, on admission but the other 13 people were died at site even before the rescuers go there so the prevention my message is prevention is always better and as a healthcare personals and uh, authorities we should emphasize the government and other people to make sure these road conditions, road discipline should be emphasized to make sure that uh, uh, these events will not happen and will reduce mortality as much as possible. So I'm happy as a medical professional, we most of us are able to manage a mass casualty event uh, properly. And uh, it's mainly the prevention is which we have to emphasize. All right.